TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Unidentified aircraft struck Iranian targets in Syria, including in the International Airport of Aleppo and in the vicinity of the capital Damascus. The U.S. notes cautious optimism over a looming revival of the 2015 nuclear deal, while the EU and France highlight their hope for an agreement in the next couple of days. Russia highlights its deepening relations with Iran in a proclaimed joint effort to disavow what they view as the West's hegemony. Unidentified aircraft bombed Iranian targets in Syria yesterday evening. Two aerial strikes, which were executed one hour apart, targeted installations in Syria's northern international airport of Aleppo and in the vicinity of its capital Damascus respectively. The first reported strike, which took place shortly after 8 p.m., occurred while an Iranian cargo plane was approaching Aleppo International Airport. According to local sources, which TV7 could not immediately corroborate, at least one runway was damaged and a number of adjacent warehouses were also impacted as a result of the initial strikes, which the Damascus regime quickly attributed to the Israeli Air Force. Subsequently, reports indicated that the aforementioned Iranian cargo plane diverted its route to the more southern international airport of the Syrian capital Damascus. Consequently, less than an hour following the initial strike, salvos of precision-guided munitions appeared over the skies of Damascus, and while Syria's aerial defense array was activated, the incoming projectile successfully struck a number of targets in the vicinity of Damascus International Airport alongside military positions in Al-Kiswa and Rif Damashk. And while the Damascus regime pointed a blaming finger toward Jerusalem, the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm or deny its alleged responsibility in response to TV7's request for comment. It is important to know that prior to the reported strikes, Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid held a phone conversation with U.S. President Joe Biden, which lasted for a full hour. Sources familiar with the contents of their conversation noted that the two leaders focused primarily on the challenge of Iran, including its nuclear file, and a joint Israeli-American effort to confront Tehran's malign activities by means of its proxies throughout the Middle East. Meanwhile, according to White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, President Biden also voiced hope that a maritime dispute between Israel and Lebanon would soon be resolved and highlighted also the deep and unbreakable bond between Washington and Jerusalem, which was apparently displayed during his July trip to Israel. The President spoke with Prime Minister Lapid this morning to consult on global and regional security challenges, including threats uh, posed by Iran and Iran-backed proxies. Uh, the President expressed appreciation for the warm reception during his July trip to Israel, a visit, that, a visit that illustrated the unbreakable bonds and friendship between our two countries. He also committed to sustained coordination to implement the announced trip deliverables. Uh, the President further emphasized the importance importance of conduct, concluding uh, the maritime boundary negotiations between Israel and Lebanon in the coming weeks. It is important to highlight that the Biden administration is cautiously optimistic about the chances of reaching a new nuclear deal with Iran. According to the coordinator for strategic communications of the U.S. National Security Council, John Kirby, the U.S. administration believes it is closer to an agreement at present than it had been in the past several weeks and months, thanks to Iran's willingness to drop several of its non-nuclear demands. Nevertheless, in a joint press conference in Moscow, alongside his host counterpart Sergei Lavrov, Iranian Foreign Minister Hassan Amir Abdullahian contradicted the American statement by asserting that Tehran had not abandoned its separate demands for guarantees and for the IAEA to abandon its outstanding probes into undeclared nuclear materials which were uncovered in Iran. Regarding the negotiations of the Islamic Republic of Iran on the matter of removal of sanctions, 
The latest American text which we received, my colleagues have studied it thoroughly regarding the guarantees. We still think about a way to receive a stronger text on the matter of sustainable guarantees. We are very much interested in reaching a good, serious, and strong agreement. In our negotiations, we raised questions. First, demanding of the IAEA to abandon its political discourse. Rather, it must deal with its exclusively technical mandate. Secondly, the Islamic Republic of Iran will not accept of JCPOA participants to voice political positions over unfounded accusations by the IAEA regarding our nuclear program. The Iranian top diplomat continued by reiterating the Ayatollah regime's position in which it expects the United States to succumb to its demands on the two aforementioned issues for the nuclear agreement to be revived. We believe that if the Americans are serious about removing sanctions and our other concerns, then I believe that we are not far from reaching an agreement. Moscow's top diplomat for his part highlighted the deepening relations between Russia and the Islamic Republic of Iran. We который будет зафиксирован в большом межгосударственном договоре. Работа над этим документом сейчас находится на завершающей стадии. Он будет иметь стратегическое значение, и в нем будут изложены базовые ориентиры дальнейшего наращивания всего комплекса российско-иранских связей на ближайшие десятилетия. Параллельно идет работа над еще одним документом о долгосрочном сотрудничестве в области экономики и о соответствующей дорожной карте, так что и в экономической сфере мы раскрываем потенциал, который имеется и далеко пока еще не исчерпан. Earlier, prior to their meeting, behind closed doors, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov noted that the discussions with his Iranian counterpart Amir Abdullahian aim to deepen cooperation on a broad number of issues which aim to detach Moscow and Tehran from any international diktats. Из международной повестки дня выделю такие актуальные темы, как необходимость полного и безусловного возобновления совместного всеобъемлющего плана действий по иранской ядерной программе, наше взаимодействие по Сирии, по другим кризисным ситуациям в регионе, и координацию в Организации Объединенных Наций. Наши западные коллеги в стремлении установить свое полное доминирование в мире целенаправленно, последовательно разрушают всю структуру международных отношений. Но на этом фоне мы концентрируемся вместе с нашими друзьями, включая, конечно же, Исламскую Республику Иран, на создании надежных, конструктивных механизмов, которые позволят независимо от какого-либо диктата развивать взаимовыгодное сотрудничество. In an apparent response to these comments in an address to French ambassadors in Paris this morning, French President Emmanuel Macron highlighted the difficulty in dealing with authoritarian powers such as Russia and Iran, all the while voicing hope that a nuclear deal with the Islamic Republic would conclude in the coming days. C'est aussi l'affirmation de puissance autoritaire et de déséquilibre que nous avons du mal à contrer ou endiguer. L'Iran, j'espère que dans les prochains jours le JCPOA sera conclu, mais nous voyons la difficulté que, qui est la nôtre collectivement. Et la Russie, membre permanent du Conseil de sécurité, puissance dotée, qui viole délibérément la Charte des Nations Unies dans une logique impérialiste assumée. Ces dernières années, nous n'ayons pas réussi collectivement à contenir ou endiguer ces puissances de déséquilibre, est un problème évidemment qui fragilise l'ordre international. It is worth noting that the voiced hope by the French head of state for a revival of the 2015 nuclear agreement effectively echoed a statement made by the European Union's high representative for foreign affairs and defense policy, Josep Borrell, who stressed earlier during an informal meeting of EU foreign ministers in Prague that common ground has been achieved.
to me is clear that uh, there is a common ground, that uh, we have an, an agreement that takes into account, I think, everyone concerns, and that I am hoping that in the coming days uh, we are not going to lose this momentum and we can, we can uh, close the deal, taking into account these uh, reasonable comments that both parts, Iran and U.S., has been presenting to my text. The EU foreign policy chief's comments contradict the statement by Iran's foreign minister and moreover, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre did not provide for any indication of Washington succumbing to Tehran's reasserted demands. As it relates to uh, the EU, and um, look, we have said many times, Maria, we're just not going to negotiate uh, in public. As, as you know, last week we conveyed uh, our feedback about Iran's comments on the EU's proposal directly to the EU. And so uh, we're not going to say more uh, than that. We're not going to negotiate uh, from here, and we're not going to go into details on contents uh, or, or our response. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It is important for us to continue highlighting the TV7 Israel's donation-based ministry. Hence, if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Additionally, I'd like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen wishing you an Erev Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.